Good day. I'm, I'm Leslie Hudson, and you are watching Mocha Chocolate Monday. Just a cup of inspiration to jumpstart your week. This week, I am interviewing breast cancer survivors, telling their stories. And today, I have a very special, two very special guests. They happen to be sisters. That's right. They are my best friends, and I've known them for a while and love them to life. I can't wait for you to hear their stories. Yeah, yeah, come on. Leslie Hudson has a cup of inspiration just for you. What an awesome way to start your day on Mocha Chocolate Mondays. On Mocha Chocolate Mondays. My special guest today is Deborah Tyson and Darlene Lackey, sisters. Welcome so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having us. Thank, Thank you so, so much for deciding to come and hang out with me and tell your story. Yes, absolutely. So Darlene, Deborah, I've known you guys for a long time. Yes. Yes. And I see you guys have your pink on and we know that we are in the month of October and we see pink everywhere, right? right? Yes, ma'am. Everywhere. So Darlene, let's start with, um, let's give us a little background. First of all, where are you guys from? Okay. I'm a, I'm a native Atlantan, born and raised. Um, I've lived here all my life. I did go to college a little bit in, in Texas, but I'm a okay. native Atlantan. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's hard and it's very rare to find people who are born and raised in Atlanta. Yes, it is. It is, but you guys have been here for a while. So, Darlene, tell me a little bit about your story and when you were first diagnosed with breast cancer. How did you know? Okay. Sure. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in September of 2007. Um, it's, it's still pretty, you know, I get still pretty emotional. Um, before, before I knew that I had breast cancer, I was having some issues with my stomach and I didn't know what was going on. And so, I, I actually drove myself to the hospital. Oh. On um, it was on Labor Day. Labor Day. Okay. Labor Day. I drove myself to the hospital, and come to find out that I was having problems with my gallbladder. Mm, okay. So that's how they found. Well, it was just by the grace of God when they did the testing for my gallbladder. The um, technician, she went all the way up and started to film my breasts. And so it came back where, okay, yes, we know that you have a problem with, the, you know, your gallbladder is going to need to come out. But we see a lump in your breast. And so I thought, oh, my goodness, no. I, I, I didn't understand. I didn't know what was happening then. So after that... Um, the gallbladder, you know, that was important to get that taken care of too. But the other main thing was to let's focus on what this lump is. Okay. So, um, I went to my primary physician and she, um, did her course of, of everything. And so, and she sent me out to a breast cancer surgeon. Okay. And so from there, it started with, you know, having the biopsy and so forth, just to make sure to see what stage I okay. was in and okay. everything. So when that was done, when the biopsy came back, it came back uh, positive that I did have breast cancer. Uh, and I was at stage four, stage four, and it was called stage four ductal carcinoma estrogen receptive breast cancer okay so there we are we that was that was a lot <laughs> that was a lot and so at first i just felt numb i did i really felt numb and you know i was at the um the doctor i'm trying to think back i know my my sister went with me she was on this journey with me the whole time but i'm trying to remember was she with me at the time when I was in the hospital, I mean, at the doctor's office. But I do remember later on that, that evening, 
we got together and we had to call the family. You know, we call my, you know, my husband, okay. and my, my mm -hmm. brothers and everything. My sister already knew. And so we, you know, we just, we never had a pity party. We no, were just going right. to, right. we accepted that. And, you know, we know that God is present in our life. In control. We are and in control. So I never wavered, nor did I even ask why. I just said, you know. But I have, while she's composing, I have this little part I have to put in there. When my sister and I were walking in the doctor's office, of course I look like I'm the older sister, right? But the nurse said, okay, Miss Darlene, come on back with your mom. And I said, my mom? And I Man, turned around. We lost my mom in 1999. So I knew mom, mom wasn't here, but you right. know what? When we look back at it, we think mom was with us that day. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. Wow, that's, that's, wow, that's a story. Now, now tell, tell me this, was breast cancer, cancer in the family? family? Yes. Okay. We had a, aunt. our great aunt. Yes. Who, we never knew about, this was when I was in high school, mm -hmm. when she had a total mastectomy. We didn't was know anything spoke? about, no, mm -hmm. this was in no. the 70s. Okay. beginning of the 70s mm -hmm. okay. and she, we didn't remember her going through any other treatments other than just having a total mastectomy that okay. was it okay back at that time mm -hmm. I know that you went into the hospital for your gallbladder mm -hmm. you were diagnosed they saw the lump yes at that moment mm -hmm. there was a history of breast cancer in the family mm -hmm. we're used to doing breast care self exam oh, yes so you guys were doing it anyway very anyway. much so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very much so okay okay All right. and going back to you know to my story so when i did have the lumpectomy they did took my gallbladder out and the lump out of my breast all in the same day really i had the surgery at the same time they did the gallbladder first and then the breast surgery okay second okay now did you have to go through any other type of treatment? Since it was pop, did you go through um, having to take the tamoxifen or anything like that? Or there was something called this Occutype test, very expensive test, but um, it determined whether or not if you were um, more susceptible to having to take chemotherapy. Okay. So when they looked at all of your, what is the word I'm looking for? All of your, I can't remember the word. Um, it came back where, no, I didn't have to take chemotherapy. Okay, okay, okay. But I was going to have to have radiation. So okay. I did have 16 weeks of radiation. Okay. And then I developed, maybe I was in my radiation regimen about a month. And I developed a really bad infection. I mean, it was like a deep hole where that lump was. So they had to stop the radiation completely, let that heal, and then I had to, you know, start the radiation treatment over again. Okay. So in all, I think it was like 16 weeks. I was a little over 16 weeks, okay. Monday through Friday. Okay. Going to radiation. So what a journey. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Deborah, we're going to switch over to you. So you recently. Yes, very recent uh, to the point of it's still fresh. Um, I went, you know, and I would get my mammogram every, you know, year. Um, my um, gynecologist was doing everything. I, I thought I was doing all the right things. And so one night I woke, woke up. And I was like in a puddle of liquid. Don't know why, but it was liquid. So it was time for me to go get my annual. So when I went and I told her, I said, I don't know what's going on, but um, my breast is leaking. And she said, it's probably just, you know, your ducts. You've, you, did you hit yourself? Did you do this? Did you do that? And I said, no, I haven't hit myself or anything. She said, I'm going to send you down here and let her take a sample mm -hmm. of this liquid. I said, okay, I went down, she took the sample. You're talking about something that hurt? Yes, pain, but I did it. 
So it came back that I needed to go and have an extensive mammogram. Okay. Okay. And that's the one, I think it's the 3D mammogram. Right, right. So they did it, and she said it's in the left breast. So with the liquid, you went to the doctor and they wanted to sample it. Did they do an aspiration? Did they do a biopsy day or? Yes, she did all of that. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. okay. She did all of that. Um, like I said, um, I just thought, you know, just like she said, it was just something going on with my ducks, right, right, never right. cancer. That was the father's thing. But then when I did my um, biopsy and everything, it came back, I was zero, meaning it was so new that it wasn't even on the scale yet. Early detection. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I called my sister, you know, we had our little it's going to be okay, you know. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. It's, you know, I've gone through this. You, 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 yeah. you you've done this. It. You've yes. done this. Bef I've done this before. Right. You know, just take your notes. Make sure you know what she's talking about. And if you don't know, then call me. And I said, okay. So I ended up going to my surgeon. And she said, it's got to come off. Not like some people just take the lump out. Right. She right. said, we have to, I think it's called a total mastectomy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she said you have um, the disease meaning the whole breast is infected and I said what does that mean right. I said can it travel you know to other parts of my body you know I'm asking a million questions right as, we, she, as you should mm -hmm. and so right. she said well I'm not going to tell you to take both breasts off I'm not going to tell you to keep both breasts on she said but the left has to go so I prayed about it, talked to my sister about it, talked to my husband about it. My, my daughter is a nurse, talked to my son. They said, Mom, you make that decision. I talked to my physician. He said, don't get hung up on how you look. Mm -hmm. Get hung up on living. Right. So if that's going to make you live longer, take them off. You know, he said, but I can't tell you what to do. So when I went back to see her, I told her I was going to have them both removed. So that's what I did. Okay. But that was the first of my nightmare. Okay. And it was a nightmare. I, I got them removed and I'll never forget it. It was on my birthday. I was in the hospital on, on my your birthday. birthday. Went home, one feeling well, my leg was hurting. Remember I told you about Mike with yeah. Pastor O'Neill? Leg was hurting, didn't know what it was. I kept doing my exercises. Lord, please make this pain stop. Um, my daughter-in-law, because you know, my son's been married several times. I don't consider them as exes. So- They're still family. She came up and she was taking care of me and everything, long story, short story. I got to the point where I couldn't breathe. So I said, let me get my nebulizer and maybe it's just my lungs, whatever. I did all of that. Just, just trying to self-medicate. My husband looked at me, he said, you need to call your doctor again. By that time, my oldest brother called and he said, Deborah, if you can't breathe, you get out of there. Absolutely. No uncertainty. You need to get out of there. So when my brother said that, <clears throat> my husband got in the car, he has the big Dodge Ram, <laughs> and I got in the car, can't breathe, couldn't do nothing. And because that truck, when he was going so fast, it was bouncing. Mm -hmm. Leslie, that's the only thing that saved my life. Mm -hmm. I was getting ready to have a pulmonary ambulism. Oh, my ambulism. And said, yeah. if, I had to kept jumping up and down. It would have kept traveling. Mm -hmm. So the up and down made it just, okay, what am I supposed to do next? You know, right, right. we got to the hospital and my daughter, Cora, she was taking no for no answers. You know, she was like, y'all come see about her right now. Right She's now. very yep. demanding. And she came and they put this big mask I don't know what it was, but only thing I can remember, y'all, I couldn't breathe. 
Right. Until I got this thing on. On your face. So, so this, this was after, after the mastectomy? Yes. And you developed the blood clot in your leg. Mm -hmm. So I was bouncing in the truck and I went to the hospital and I, like my sister, had a really bad infection. Ended up having to have wound care, you know, and that's where they put the machine on you that pulls everything out. That makes you crazy because everywhere you go, you got to carry this big monstrosity. But through it all, my sister was always there, you know, and the day, <clears throat> the day before I was going to have my surgery, I have to tell y'all this, she and my nephew Jeff came over with balloons and a flower and everything. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was going to be okay. Absolutely. No matter what, because Jeffrey even drew me a picture and said, it's going to be okay, TT, you know, and I said, Yes, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I didn't know I was going to go through all of that. All of that. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But God, God was there. Yes. Working at Every all. step. Every step of the way. And still going through it. I have not had that final thing. Um, they told me just last Thursday that I need to be on this blood thinner another, you know, be on it for six months before they can tell me what to do. So I would tell anybody that's going through this, tell your doctor everything, not some things, but everything. I don't care how minute it may be. Tell them, you know. Absolutely. Right. And you were there for her as you were there for her. Absolutely. Oh, yes. yes. 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so, wow. I was taking her dinner one night, and just like my right. sister got lost today, totally lost. I woke up. I saw. I mean, I I looked up. I said, "Darling, I don't know where I am." You know, because I had bought. Remember, darling, I bought you a spread mm -hmm. and something else for your bed, mm -hmm. and I had cooked dinner. She wanted some turnips. I had made turnips, turnips. and stuff, and I was and taking roast. her dinner, mm -hmm. and I was so lost. So when she called me today in frantic. I didn't want to know all that. I just need to go get my sister. Absolutely. Absolutely. You ladies look beautiful. Thank you know, you. people, I'm sure, tell you don't look nothing like what you've been through. No. And God is so good. He really is. You yes, know, he is. To have both of you here, 14 years, one year now on your journey. Um, so when you were first diagnosed, um, stage zero, what can we talk about and how can we encourage other women to, you know, about breast cancer? I mean, early the was the key. Was the key. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And I know that was the key for me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. right. Because, you know, you, you never expect, I mean, because it was, my lump was like the size of just maybe a, um, a sweet pea or something. But the thing that really um, ch was the game changer is because it had spread it into my lymph node. Lymph node. It was stage four. And, mm -hmm. and so when they removed 26 mm. lymph nodes, and you only have 32 in your, under your arm, but they removed 26. So I always remember that number right. of 26. But... Um, through it all, um, I had reconstruction uh, back in 2015. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you waited a while. That so was I waited a while. I just wasn't ready, even though my, my surgeon had suggested it, you know, a few years prior to. But I said, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. Right. Um, it wasn't a thing where I felt like I was feeling less than a woman because of how that breast looked after the surgery. I was never, I didn't, I didn't care about that. But I know that afterwards, you know, it did make me feel better, but it was okay. It was okay. It was right. okay. Yes, it was. It was okay. So when I decided that it was time, that's when I did it. Okay. 2015. Hallelujah, praise. And I have to say that my sister's been there, but my husband and my children have been there. You know what I mean, Leslie? Mm -hmm. and I, yes. And you need a support 
unit. You know, you need that. And if you don't have that, then call me. I'll be your support unit. You know what I mean? I will be Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how we met Leslie. Mm -hmm. That's exactly that's, that's how, how we met That's her. how we became best friends. That's right. Best friends. Best friends. Absolutely. Best friends. You guys were yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Leslie and I, we used to go on, on the different... I guess we can we can call it the breast cancer circuits where we were going to everything. Every time yes. they had something that said, "Oh, you're invited," <laughs> we were there in the city, everywhere. In the city, right? everywhere. Mm -hmm. We were, we, we were. were. And y'all would bring me back something that y'all had. <laughs> you know, I have a muffin thing and an apron. So Leslie, she did a lot of encouraging because she went through it before I did. So she could tell me some of the things that I went through, and then I could tell my sister some of the things that I went through. Absolutely. So it has just come back around. And we all in right. We're all in this together, yeah. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and we support mm -hmm. one another. And that's exactly. What it's all about. Exactly. Even when you have those moments, you know, I had another interview and she talked about the aftermath because yeah. there is an after, the aftermath, you yes. know. You go through the surgery, you go through chemo or the radiation mm -hmm. and it can be years later and you yes. still have that moment of after mm -hmm. that aftermath exactly but you just got to keep believing and trusting God and trusting God mm -hmm. absolutely we are survivors mm -hmm. we're strong yes, we, are. Uh, we never gave up there's hope there's hope for the survivors there's I know that the um, treatments now from 2006 to now, that has changed a lot. There are a lot of things that are totally different, you know, from when Leslie went through her journey, when I went through my journey, right. and even now that my sister is still going through her journey. Right. So we never stop learning. You, you never stop learning more about the disease, right. but we just hope that one day in our lifetimes that it will be eradicated, that we won't have any more Absolutely. breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We won't have this any longer. Absolutely. So tell me this, on our, as we get ready to close, what is mm -hmm. one thing, one thing of advice would you give to other women that are watching this show right now? You know, I know that early detection, you know, for me would be the key when you, um, feel something, say something, do something, exactly right? Exactly, right. Um, do you want, you want me to go sure, first? Sure, go ahead. Um, I would, <clears throat> excuse me, I would just say, always be positive. Mm -hmm. That's, that was kind of the key, my motivation to always be positive um, and not be afraid. You know, some people are afraid when they're going through things, they're, they're afraid to tell their story. I've never been afraid to tell my story because if I can tell my story to one person and that may help, that person and that person may help someone else. I'm here to tell my story. And so that's important to me that I tell my story. Okay. And I just hope that anybody that has, that if you have to, if you go through it, you're not alone. Not alone. You're Never. not alone. Never. Absolutely. What is that saying? Uh, I had breast cancer, but breast cancer didn't, didn't have, have me. me. Amen. Amen, Amen to that. Amen. Well, mine would be <clears throat> always have a doctor that you're comfortable with. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. And that you can tell them anything. Mm -hmm. And when I say anything, I mean anything. You, that's, that's, that's because a lot of people just go to the doctor just to go to the doctor. But go to the doctor with one that will help all these question marks. Mm. You know, just just be very open, you know, and just know that there's always, you think you have it bad? It's like, I used to cry because I had no shoes mm -hmm. until I saw someone that didn't have feet. You hear what I'm saying? Right. So just be very, very, when I say vigil, in knowing your body. Know your body, you know, just, just know it. You know, I, I knew something was wrong and you know, then it made me question myself. Did I, did I bounce myself, you know, in the <laughs> chest, you know, did I hit yourself or something? do something that was not, mm -hmm. you know? So the next thing I did was what? Go to the doctor. Yes. Okay. So my advice 
would be to anybody, if it's not normal, go to the doctor. All right. I One subject that I did not talk about um, that I want to circle back with is okay. in regards to both of you are married. And both of you ha were married when you were diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. What effect did that with your husbands? Um, with mine, he was very supportive. He didn't care about, oh, whether you have, well, whether you have, you know, had to, to, ta to take off the total breast or not, but just support. He was Absolutely. always there okay. Okay. being supportive and everything, and I'm with you. So um, okay. that was, that was the, the key, just being having that support system okay. for my husband. Exactly. Well, mine is a funny one, Leslie. I guess y'all think I'm a nut anyway. <laughs> but here we go again. Deborah's never had any big breasts, okay? Right. So it wasn't like my husband lost a lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, wow, you can get a C or a D, you know? <laughs> I mean, he was happy, you know? Like, and then my son said, yeah, mom, go ahead and get you a C or D. And I'm like, do y'all realize I'm really sick and y'all telling me, but they were trying to get, they were trying right, to get yeah. my mind in another place. Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. so I have to say between my son and my <laughs> husband, it was a funny, and my daughter was the one that was grounded, like, y'all need to stop this. Mom right, is absolutely. sick. You know what I mean? And she was the steady one. And I mean, she, she, last thing she told us, because they both live in Texas, I'm not coming back down there no more. Every time I looked up, she was in my house. Mm -hmm. yes. You know what I mean? My Check daughter took mom. care of myself. She took care of her dad. And she took care of me. So mine was a funny story because Deborah never. So if y'all see me walking around and y'all see me real straight walking around, y'all know I'm there. <laughs> you guys are huge. Thank you so much for coming to Thank tell you. your story. Thank you for and having And I know us. that you're going to be fine on this journey. Just yes. like your sister and I. Just you know, continue to pray for me. That's I would right. definitely Absolutely. Will. Mm -hmm. And you know that you have all the support mm -hmm. right here. Thank you, you Leslie. Do. We you love do. you so much. I love you. I love you. Well, thank you for joining us on this another special edition of Mocha Chocolate Mondays where Darlene Lackey and Deborah Tyson told their story. Don't forget, tune in next week. And October is a month that we, you know, that they celebrate yes. and talk about breast cancer, mm -hmm. but it is each and every day and moment and second of our lives. Yes. So early detection is the key. If there Thing that's going on with your body, don't ever forget to if there's a change or difference, see a doctor. Please. Thanks again for joining Chocolate Mondays. Yeah, yeah, come on, yeah, yeah. When you wake up in the morning and you need a little boost, Leslie Hudson has a cup of inspiration just for you. What an awesome way to start your day. On Mocha Chocolate Mondays On Mocha Chocolate Mondays